Zach Woods, you play uh, Jared on Silicon Valley, which has wrapped up its fifth season. Um, what was your reaction when you read, uh, when you found out the arc that Jared had this season, uh, especially in terms of his relationship with Richard? What was your reaction to that? Well, you know, you find it out in little installments because they're writing as we shoot. So I never really, you, you, don't, you only sort of have a sense of the arc in retrospect because you don't know what's coming when you're shooting. But um, I love it. I mean, I, I love this season. It was so fun. And, and um, I don't know. I like that to some extent Jared is like the Jiminy Cricket to Richard's Pinocchio a little bit, but then a Jiminy Cricket who also occasionally gets really, really angry <laughs> with people um, or like who has brief flashes of darkness. So I just loved it. It was a really fun, it was a fun season. One of the um, uh, interesting things you told us in one of your pre one of our previous chats that we had was how um, you I think you described Jared as being like a puppy that's mm -hmm. just just attached to Richard the way that he looks up to him, mm -hmm. and we saw an interesting uh, wedge into that with the introduction of this new character Holden, <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, assistant. Uh, how do you see Holden factoring into or uh, into possibly into future seasons and into the relation? and further as a wedge between your character and uh, Richard. Well, I think it's really funny. I mean, I love, first of all, the guy who plays Holden is fantastic. And I think he's so well cast. Like he's basically like just a physically smaller Jared. Um, I think uh, I think it's an interesting predicament because since Jared's the COO, he has to uh, deal with larger issues so he can't, be in this same sort of mothering role with Richard as he used to be, but he obviously has a hard time parting with that role. So I don't know. I think there's probably some profound envy uh, of Holden, even though Jared hired him. And then at the end of the season, when he successfully converted Holden to be uh, sort of a Pied Piper ideologue, um, I really like that. I like that he's, <laughs> that he's broken him down. I think the line was, I just took away everything that wasn't Richard's assistant, and this is what was left. Uh, which I think is that he's like psychically deconstructed this young man in order to better serve Richard. Is funny to me. And the way and the look of pride you had on your face when you were saying that of like <laughs> I'm so proud of what I've done here is <laughs> just oh, fantastic. Oh, thanks. Um, it, it, uh, it's some of this is stuff that uh, the the actor who played Holden. Uh, was so great and over the top. Was any of that, because I know you sometimes improvise, you don't know what makes it onto the show, but uh, did, did he ever uh, sort of ad-lib any, any, any of that? I don't know if he ad-libbed it. I think he, the thing that felt sort of improvisational to me watching it was just how hard he committed. Because you read those, you know, you read those lines on the page, it's just like, fuck yeah, or whatever, exclamation point. But he, the first time he did it, I think everyone was kind of like, oh, wow, <laughs> like he really, and also what was interesting is we, we sort of liked that because he was, they cast him initially for an episode where he was sort of frightened and a little bit low status. And so when they were auditioning him, they didn't know that he was gonna have to be this big, crazy person in the next episode. So the fact that he could deliver on that so satisfyingly, was uh, fortunate. I mean, he's so good. He's so funny. And you also brought up a great uh, milestone for your character. It was, I think for a lot of uh, fans of Jared, it was very rewarding to see your character finally get the title mm -hmm. of uh, COO, yeah. uh, something that he so richly deserved. <laughs> um, uh, what was your reaction when you found that out? Was it, was it sort of gratifying? Uh, <laughs> I kind of loved it. I loved that it like, that that in that episode, Jared just solves all these problems. And then one of my favorite things about playing Jared is it's, it's so fun to play someone who's completely egoless, you know, who has no self-regard whatsoever. So in that case, like when the CEO who, or COO rather, who uh, Richard's been courting turns out to be bad news, his first concern is just like, well, we got to find you a different COO. It's not, it doesn't occur to him that he would be a contender. So then to be surprised in the way that he gets surprised is, I found it kind of touching to be honest. I, I don't know, I just really loved it. And um, it was really fun to shoot. We did like a bunch of different version of, versions of it. Some, somewhere I was teary, somewhere I was 
completely fell apart, somewhere it was more sort of internal. So it was a really fun scene to shoot. Yeah, yeah I think the one that they went with was the more internal one, which yeah. I think was, uh, uh, which especially, you know, especially considering the further episode from that where you talk about emotional detachment. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. it, it just made perfect sense. Well, that's good. They're great about it. I mean, the, the, one of the comforts of working on Silicon Valley is Alec Berg and Mike Judge, who are the showrunners, in their editing, I, um, from what I gather, and what, from what, like occasionally I've been forced to watch episodes at screenings and stuff. The thing that's uh, the thing that's really remarkable to me is how they really err on the side of restraint. I think, which gives you a lot of freedom as an actor because you can take big swings and make crazy choices because you know they're going to protect you in the edit and not put in something that's melodramatic or that's over the top or that's um, too jokey. Uh, they, they are a real good sort of electric fence around um, bad taste, you know? And uh, one of the other great things about the season, especially towards the end, is that uh, we got to see uh, Amanda Crew uh, mm. interact with much more of the regular cast yeah. now, that her, now that Monica is uh, officially a part of Pied Piper. Uh, what was it like getting to ha add her to the mix of uh, the usual uh, uh, the usual gang of uh, the primary characters and to have her interact with that? Uh, it's funny. It's a funny thing shooting a show for years because there's like, there's sort of these like shadow relationships where like there's this sort of version of the group that exists in the fictional world of the show. And then there's the version of the group that exists in the real world, you know, between the actors. And what's interesting about Monica joining the gang um, professionally is it's sort of like that fictional shadow world, almost like catching up with the real relationships that we have between uh, each other. Because forever, we Amanda is like beloved, like everyone loves. She's, in addition to being just su such a grounded, um, funny, smart actor. She's also just like the loveliest person. And so everyone on Silicon Valley, we always hang out together. And when we go do press together, it's always so fun that she's part of the gang. But it's true, we don't often have that many scenes with her. So I'm hoping we'll get to do a lot more. She's also like the greatest person to play off of. Like she's so grounded, it, it, same way. Like, you know, I was talking about like the editing really protects you from being overwrought or being too jokey. Amanda, in her sort of commitment to the reality of the situation, I feel like sets you up, it grounds the scene so that you can then do stuff that's chancier um, and hopefully then you do that back to her so she can do it too. You know, but, but um, uh, I couldn't, I, I mean, I don't wanna just like, endlessly rhapsodize about Amanda Crew, but she is truly terrific. So I'm so excited that we're gonna to get to shoot more with her. So um, uh, uh, one of the uh, treasured, uh, you know, we've interviewed you a couple times and uh, I was saying uh, before uh, we started recording that uh, one of the best things that you, I think you had one of the best moments ever on a Gold Derby interview when you told us the story about how um, a real life event, uh, sleep talking, led Alec Berg to write something for for Jared where he's talking in his sleep. Right. Um, uh, were there, have there been any other arcs uh, since then, uh, or like in this seat or and probably <laughs> maybe this season or the past season that uh, came from something uh, that uh, happened in real life or a story that you told someone and it found its way into a script? It's interesting. Um... Well, I think like, so for example, I don't watch myself because uh, I don't watch the show because I find it sort of excruciating to see myself um, on television. <laughs> and so I, my guess is, I haven't confirmed this with them, but my guess is the storyline where Jared is on Emily Chang um, with Thomas and then he ends up seeing himself and he's so horrified by the appearance of his own face that he gets saline injections. They're called Cinderella lips because it's like a temporary saline injection. So it gives you a night of being a princess and then it goes away. I looked it up. It's amazing that people get Cinderella lips. But so Jared gets Cinderella lips 
because he's so horrified by the sight of his own face. I think that, in a way, is based on the fact that I don't watch myself at all uh, and because it's too horrible for me. And who knows, maybe if I ever watched a full season of Silicon Valley, I would end up getting some <laughs> plastic surgery. Oh dear God! Yeah. Just, uh, just make sure it's temporary. My God, make sure it's yeah, temporary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a great physical gag. And yeah, I love that. One of the interesting things about Jared is is how you have this interesting mix of you know a, 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 a playfulness and more uh, verbal gags, but also a, a good amount of physical gags, but not what you would normally think of in terms of physical comedy. Because again, like you said, it's it's restrained. Mm -hmm. uh, do you enjoy one type more than the other? It's interesting. Well, it's funny, like with the, like, so for example, with the gag with the lips, right? Like that joke, there's kind of less work. You, you have to do less work as an actor in a way to make it, I mean, okay. You don't have to work that hard ever because the scripts are very funny. But in the case of those lips, all your job is sort of when you have something so insane looking on your face, it's just to ground it in reality. So like if you start acting crazy and you've got these like insane Cinderella lips, then the scene just feels like this like ham fisted stupidity. So in a weird way, when like a prop literally takes care of the comedy for you, it's kind of like you get to relax a little bit. You don't have to worry about being funny because just like people will look at you and, and, uh, and laugh, hopefully. Although what was interesting is I would go out, you know, we shoot on the Sony lot in Culver City, um, and I would leave the soundstage to go use the bathroom or eat lunch or whatever, and I would see other people who um, didn't work on the show. And I sort of assumed, I looked so bizarre that I sort of assumed that people would, you know, react, but, People didn't really, and it occurred to me that in Los Angeles, there's so much like crazy, insane plastic surgery that maybe people are just like, yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot worse. Um, <laughs> or maybe Zach's had work done. <laughs> yeah, or maybe they just assumed it was like for a, a project, but I thought that was kind of surprising. So in addition to uh, your great work on Silicon Valley, we've been other things, and uh, I think probably uh, the, one of the great things that we saw you in uh, recently was uh, The Post, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg, which got nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to be directed by Steven Spielberg? It was really fun. It was interesting. Like, I talked to him before we started shooting, and he told me, because um, uh, he watched Silicon Valley, and that's how he knew who I was. And that was flattering. Like he apparently is a big fan of the show and that, that made me feel good. And I was asking him, I was like, what is your, what do you think you relate to about it? Is it sort of the entrepreneurial part of it or the, you know? And one thing he said that was interesting is he was saying, he was talking about how when he was coming up, he, he felt like an underdog. And so it was the sort of the underdog part of it that, um, that he responded to, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but to be directed by him was exciting. I mean, obviously his movies are like, you know, completely iconic and, and I love them. And uh, so, yeah, it was really fun. I really loved it. Uh, it part, part of the problem of working with people who turn out to be nice, easygoing people is it doesn't make for very good like war stories. Like I wish I could be like, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't bringing the appropriate emotion and Steven Spielberg, you know, whatever, like punched me in the Adam's apple, but it never happened. He was just like low key and pleasant. You know? And uh, and what was interesting about uh, the part of the movie that you're in is it's a very chaotic moment yeah. uh, where all this stuff is going on. And also, when you think about it, the way that uh, what's being shot, you're shooting a scene with you, Jesse Plemons, Sarah Paulson is there, Tom Hanks is there, Bob Odenkirk, and David Cross are there. I mean, what was that dynamic? Like, that had to have been just absolutely crazy to shoot. Yeah, it was really fun. It's 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 interesting. Like it never ceases to surprise me. Like how how stupid your body is. Like so, for example, like in a scene like that where there's all this energy and chaos, it's all manufactured. Obviously, like there's no. <laughs> it's we're acting, but it's so interesting how like if you get a bunch of people to act with a lot of urgency and 
that energy is like um, you're still sort of vibrating with it after they call cut. It's uh, so it's fun. It was it was really fun. I also got a kick out of the fact that like I was cast with Jesse Plemons, who we did this movie, other people together, where we have a sex scene. Um, so it really made me laugh to be in a scene with him where we're both like these sort of buttoned up corporate lawyers uh, when the only other scene we've shot together is like a reasonably graphic sex scene. It was, no, it was, it was a fun reunion. It was yeah. fun to see. I hope someone online like cuts them together, like <laughs> so that it becomes just the story of these lawyers who then eventually have a romance and break up and have post breakup sex. Make it its own movie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the other projects that you were involved in recently was uh, the animated show Big Mouth. I actually mm -hmm. interviewed Nick Kroll a couple weeks ago about that. Um, and you were in one episode in that, but it's a pretty amazing episode. Uh, and uh, you were great in it. And uh, what was it like for you? Uh, had you done voice acting before? And uh, what did you? what was your reaction to getting to participate in a show like that? I haven't done that much voice acting. Um, it's it's interesting. I find voice acting very difficult, to be honest, because I feel pretty reliant on the other actor. Uh, most of my sort of strategy for performing is to focus on the other person and what I'm getting from them. Um, and if you if you're just in a booth by yourself. It's just sort of you and your self-consciousness. There's no other person to involve yourself with. Um, so luckily on Big Mouth, there are other people in the booth with you. You do it, you know, Nick was in there with me, reading with me. And uh, and they were so sweet. They let me play around a lot. I have no idea, again, what made it in because I do. I never <laughs> liked it. But, but um, I, I was really excited to be part of Big Mouth because I feel like based on the scripts that I read, that show really represents adolescence in such a compassionate, um, messy way. And I think that's really exciting. Like I, I, I always like TV shows that sort of capture some universal fragility or something or capture some universal vulnerability um, because I don't know, the world can be so cold and, and contemptuous. And I think our um, television at its best sometimes sort of turns up the thermostat a little bit on how we feel about each other. And I think that's a show that seems to do that without being saccharine or sentimental. So it was cool to be a part of it. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, it, it really does balance that very perfectly. Yeah. Uh, and so I got one last question for you. I know you don't watch the episodes, but from your recollection of what they, of what the episodes involved, uh, 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 if you were to get nominated for an Emmy this year, mm -hmm. uh, what episode would you want to submit uh, based on what you remember the episodes being about? Well, maybe that COO one where Jared becomes the COO. People seem to really like that. Like I got calls from friends after that that were so sweet where people were like, oh, I was moved when Jared became a COO. So that, that made me feel good. I don't know. Do you? <laughs> I'm open to suggestions. I don't. I, don't I think know. that one's pretty good. I yeah. think uh, the the uh, 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 Bloomberg one with the sailing oh, lips. Yeah, that's, is, that's a pretty good one. It, the, Jared has so many good moments throughout this season, uh, as he does throughout almost every season. Uh, but I do I do like that COO one. That's a pretty good one of him putting out all these fires. All right. Well. Yeah, if if I'm fortunate enough to have to make that kind of hand wringing decision now, I I will do it. I will do the CO one <laughs> if, if I should be so lucky. But uh, yeah, but thanks for saying that. It's really nice. Well, Zach, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been great. Uh, we can't wait to see you in more things, including more Silicon Valley. And we wish you all the best this semi season. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>